Okay guys, we're recording here. We're live right now at Blades USA 24. We're sitting in the area where there's some coffee and some conversations, ISPs, asset owners, some blade design engineers, and of course a lot of solution providers. I'm here with Polytech, uh, came over from Denmark on a one world tour. You're heading back to Denmark. You're going to OMS in San Diego, so we'll be over there, okay? So I've got Thorbjorn Rasmussen, Chief Commercial Officer over at Polytech, and also Mikhail drachman Haig. I got it right? Yeah, perfect. 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 Uh, so Chief Technical Officer. So we have we have two of the, the great minds from the Polytech team here right now. Polytech, uh, while they do a lot of different solutions, uh, they have some lightning protection things, they sell to OEMs, sell to asset owners, all the above, or out of Denmark. They're really known for the L shells. L shells is a product that if you're dealing in wind turbine maintenance at all, you know that the leading edge is a problem. And the L shells were developed for offshore use originally, yes. correct? Um, and they have been installed some onshore turbines, uh, yes. some high erosion areas, or even people that are like, you know what, I think this is the solution. Where I don't have to touch my leading edges for 10, 15, 20 years. I'm putting the big exactly. stuff on. Um, so you guys have been behind the scenes, behind the curtain, working on another kind of version of that, but adjusted specifically for onshore. Yes. Want to tell us about that? Yeah. So we've taken all of the great learnings that we've had on the LO onshore, uh, offshore products, and then we've taken and built on those innovations and then we designed a product that then is easier to install, um, comes at a lower price point as well, and, and really sets aside from the more, you could say, more complicated stuff that you get out in the industry. Uh, but while still having the, uh, the great performance, yeah. and also then we don't need the material to cure at site, which we often see with coatings and, and other products. So I think, I think we really try to, uh, to say that all of the good things we have from the LA offshore, we build in that, that into an LA onshore product. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, yeah. So I would say, ask you, Thormer. So driving this market, primary market research, as we call it, of course, in the commercial world, did you have asset owners come to you and say, hey, this is great, but we'd like this? Or is it? Absolutely. Uh, we have been cooperating a lot with uh, the ISP out there. Yep. Getting feedback for installation method and um, and what was actually difficult or less easy for the let's say the the premium Ella version, and then asset owners is when they take the decision very shortly sometimes they want to run a campaign so it should be easy accessible and so forth, and all that feedback has gone back to uh, Michael and the department and and try to make sure that that was incorporated in the solution. Uh, and we can elaborate uh, more on this one. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say that it's feedback from the last five years from the field mm -hmm. uh, all over the world. Yeah, the uh, best kind of feedback. X, What's X. happening? Empirical data from the field is what we want to change things on. Exactly. Right? exactly. We can test in a lab all day and that's great. We need to do that. But when we get results back from the field, that's what we want. Yeah. So, so let's let's talk a little bit about the differences between the new onshore product and what the L offshore product was or is still. I mean, of course, it's still offered. Well, I think that the primary part that really sets it aside is the thickness of the material itself. Okay. So, the thickness of the material on the L offshore product is thicker, and thereby also having higher performance. But it also entails that we need to tailor make that product into the specific blade. Mm -hmm. So it really provides a high performance, the highest performance in the industry. But it had to be tailor made to uh, specific blades. Now we set aside with a thinner product that is more flexible and can be installed uh, faster and can actually also be installed. Let's say it's, it's a more, it's not going to be tailor made mm -hmm. to the specific mm -hmm. blade, meaning it can be installed on all blades directly out of the box. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's, I think that's really is one of the things that sets aside. What we then took as innovations as well is that we had the split liner on L offshore and we took that great innovation and then we transferred that to L onshore for ease of installation as well. Okay. That's huge. I want to touch back on the point of being able to install on the different parts of a fleet. Right, so in the United States, of course, we have large wind farms. That's a that's a hallmark of kind of the, the market over here. And in those large wind farms, you'll see sometimes, I mean, we deal with it at WeatherGuard quite often. You'll see sometimes four different manufacturers of blades and two or three different subtypes of blades in a specific wind farm. And we just dealt with this one in a, on one product. So if you have 
uh, say, let, let's take an example of GE, the new GE generation turbines, the 2Xs, right? 2.5, 2.82s. They're regular, they come with 116 meter blades and 100, or 116 meter rotors, not blades, sorry, and 127. And within those two sub models, you also have TPI can make your blades, LM can make your blades. There's a bunch of different manufacturers and there is little discrepancies between them. So if you had to have a custom made solution such as the L shells the, or the offshore shells, it would be a little bit more difficult. Now yes. with the onshore version, you're saying, hey guys, you wanna do a capital campaign? You wanna install in a hundred turbines? Here's the product, it'll work on every one of them out there. Yeah. Yes. You just need to order the uh, number of meters you need. Okay. And then the final adjustment, right at the tip, where mm -hmm. there's a big curvature on the blade, yeah. that's the point where you do a small modification, but that modification can be done on site. Perfect. So Perfect. that really, either blade make mm -hmm. or turbine model, mm -hmm. it really just can be can be fixed on anything there. So let's talk a little bit more about the technical details of leading edge protection. So from an expert's standpoint, we regularly hear you should put on four meters, you should put on six meters, you should put on 10 meters. You could do two meters of shells or three meters of shells and this much of a tape or this much of a coating. If you were, if you had a wind farm, and I know every one of them is different, say I'm gonna put you in the middle of Texas, how many meters of this new product do you think you'd put on? Well, it really depends on your specific turbine, right? right. So the bigger turbines will also require more, a, big, a bigger length, a longer length of protection. But what we typically do, and we can do that for any site in the world, we can offer a calculation, okay. a specific calculation for that specific site, that specific turbine, that allows you to exactly predict what do you need. Okay. So, And we will then be able to sell you exactly what you need, no more, no less. Perfect. Then there might be uh, some, uh, some campaigns where you fix, it, fix the number to installing 10 meters mm -hmm. because that fits within a day, a working day, mm -hmm. and then it might be that is the right option for that specific site. It really depends uh, based on the customer. But I think we try to deliver the calculations behind, but also the product that can then fulfill that yeah, need. Yeah, yeah. So if uh, an asset owner or an ISP, or an asset owner and ISP in conjunction, contact Polytech to say, hey, we're, we're looking at your leading edge protection solutions. You guys can also offer the, the customer success for support part of that too. Like, hey guys, we believe through calculation that this is how much you need. So when you're contacting you guys, you're contacting experts in LEP. Yes, yeah. right. they'll get a report that then says uh, what is the expected uh, length you need, mm -hmm. but also what is the expected um, repair intervals, if yeah. there are any repair intervals. So that means that they can already now plan the predicted maintenance. Yeah. So when do you need to go and look at the blade again? Yeah. And when do you then need to maybe plan for repair? Okay. Again, depending on site conditions and turbine right. conditions. Just a little caveat to this uh, calculator. It's, it's based upon two heavy input. The one is 20 years of uh, weather data from NASA, mm -hmm. simply put into a database, and then correlated with many hours in the, the wind uh, erosion rain tester. Erosion tester yeah. yeah, sorry, the rain erosion tester. And, and then combining, of course, with uh, very verification on let's let's do this and according to the new standard and then having feedback from uh, certain areas of the world saying we calculate this on this coordinate how does it actually look after yeah. seven years ground truth thing yeah. yes. yes and then uh, the service department of OEMs the yeah. asset owner has then feedback to us and then correlated together with us yes it actually matches what we're seeing out there a little bit less or a little bit more but more or less matches. So we are pretty sure this tool is, is, uh, is, is the right one for the asset owner. And the great thing is there's no price tag to it because we offer it uh, for free. Everybody likes free. <laughs> it's where they get you at the end on the, uh, on the LEP product. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's go back to this LEP product, the new one. You guys have, of course, been through the rain erosion testing. You've, you've, done, you've done your due diligence in the, uh, in the design phase and in the testing phase, but you've deployed it already as well, too. Yeah, so we have already installed it in, uh, in a site in Denmark. That was our first installation. And then uh, later last year, we also installed it in... I would say uh, challenging conditions in Canada as well, okay. really to get the winter season across, so right. the cold temperatures. So we're going to uh, go and inspect those turbines here in the coming, uh, the coming months okay. as well. So another thing I want to touch on here, and we talked about it a little bit off air, but uh, we're all in the wind industry and 
when you talk about aftermarket upgrades, if you're talking about, it doesn't really matter, VG panels, our strike tape product, the Polytech shells, any kind of LEP, any addition or add-on to a blade, they operate in a crazy environmental conditions. If you're listening to a podcast, you know this. It's in rain, it's in dust, it's in bugs, it's 300 kilometer an hour tip speeds, it's all these things. So unless those products are installed correctly, right? When someone gives you a set of instructions to install a product, please, please, this is begging the industry and I, all, all the technicians out there, please do it per the instructions. There's a lot of work that has gone into those instructions to make it so that the products last on the blade. What have you guys done with the new product to make it easier to install in the field to guarantee that durability, longevity, efficacy of the product out there? Well, so the split liner is really one of the things where, where we aid the operator in installing it correctly. What we also do is that we, uh, we allow the uh, product to apply it with a water film below okay. so you can squeeze out any air that might be there. I think that's a, that's a really benefit uh, for, for a product like this. Um, and then what we've done is that we've also selected materials that are robust against mm -hmm. these different conditions that might be there. So um, low temperatures, high humidity. And then one of the other elements that we also found as being challenging is the wow. edge sealant that is okay. being performed on typical many products uh, that we've removed from this product also to oh. make it a faster so one installation. Last step, yeah. Exactly. And you don't have this liquid chemical um, on site that needs to that needs to cure. Mm -hmm. So it complicates or, or removes a bit of complication mm -hmm. in the product and in this the installation. So less steps, less complicated, Easier less to work with. Yeah. risk of failures. So of, of course we don't want to give away your secret mm -hmm. sauce. But if you were to give me like the, the quick one, two, three, four, five steps. What does it look like to install and how does the product come? Well, so if we if we take the product, um, then it's right there, perfect. The product here, right, is uh, that's the that's the product, that's the material that we have. So it comes as a, as a flexible film, okay. um, about 300 millimeters wide and, and it fits the blade uh, perfectly, okay. the curvature of the blade. When we look at um, the, uh, the adhesion method, then we have the split liner. Okay. So it comes here with a split liner that uh, the first part in the uh, in the sensor is removed, and then it's installed in the sensor, mm -hmm. and then you have fixed it, uh, fixated to the, the product yeah. right to the blade, and then you install the the sides afterwards. Okay. And that can what we've done so far in in our sort of uh, application environment that we have at Polytech in, in Warming is that we've installed it uh, in a continuous length as well. So, okay. you can so if you're putting on six meters, eight meters, ten meters, you're getting a roll of this, basically. You're getting a roll of that, and then you install it in in one piece. Okay. Uh, of course, if you're hanging from a rope, it might be a bit more difficult to yeah. do, but uh, but from a from a basket, we've succeeded in installing it in a continuous length. Okay. So like a traditional LEP product, you're making sure. I mean, you can't have <laughs> cat two, cat three bad damages on the leading edge. Those need to be cleaned up yeah. by a technician. Yeah. Uh, blade preps, we do a little sand and do a little alcohol cleaning, make sure the thing looks beautiful. Then from there on, do you need to, is it a spray bottle of water to put on there so yeah. you can squeegee it out? Yeah, you typically okay. spray, spray uh, water on the blade, yep. but also on the product, okay. because then you don't have that immediate tack. Yeah. And then you, this allows you to squeegee out any air bubbles that might be. It's like putting window tint on. Exactly. Like, I mean, kind yes. of, right? Yes. Yes. And I think, I I think Americans yeah, are good at that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So. Perfect. Yeah. Especially perfect. in Texas, everybody yeah. has tint on their windows because it's yeah. too yeah. dang bright down here. Okay, so so the product itself, uh, very interesting, uh, different different than what you feel in the rest of the market. Yeah. Right. I've never I've never put my hands on a, a LEP product that felt like that, uh, but uh, you can feel that it would almost some talking rain erosion testing that it would almost cushion, yeah, against yes. rain droplets rather than take yes. a hard impact. Yeah. And definitely that's where we're combining the uh, the thickness of that absorption power of the material, but also ease of installation. Yeah. So if it becomes too thick, the installation becomes a bit more difficult, difficult to yeah. do. So we are finding the right balance between that thickness and then the also the, let's say the performance in the rain motion tester. Okay, okay. All right, so I mean, is it available now? Not for serial delivery. Uh, not today, <laughs> okay. but it will uh, shortly be at least. Okay, All we right. are we are working hard uh, in our facilities in Bombing really to uh, to make the product ready. Perfect. Okay, so let's so so we've got the product. We're also going to shift gears here. We're going to talk Polytech for a little bit. So Thorburn, you're telling me that you guys are you guys are making some moves. Yeah. 
But just to confirm that in a short while is in a few months. Yep. Um, in June, we are uh, absolutely sure that we can deliver uh, to the market. Okay. Uh, so that's why we're bringing it to the market now. So get people can prepped. feel in touch yep. and uh, get, get an idea. And uh, then, of course, maybe plan for late season. Um, we have been... Uh, Working from uh, Europe to uh, towards US with uh, travel, visit, and so forth, and we will continue doing that. And our normal staff is uh, still available. We have strengthened a little bit, but we actually had a um, sleeping company in US, and we probably going to reactivate that mm -hmm. in order to create also a warehouse situation that uh, we can deliver uh, with short notice out of. Uh, out of US. Oh, yeah. And simply also, some of the feedback we've gotten is that ease the installation, ease the access, and have a uh, decentralized warehouse situation yeah. in US. And we uh, try to listen. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> so within, uh, within uh, this year, uh, we are planning to activate that as well. Yeah, I mean, from a customer success standpoint, it's fantastic to have someone. I mean, Denmark and the U.S., you're six, five, six, seven, eight hours apart, right? Yeah. So it's nice to have someone here to help the customers have a that warm, fuzzy feeling that politics right down the road. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay, guys, so we're, we're nearing towards the end of what we want to chat about here, but I want to make sure that anybody that wants to see the product can get their hands on it. So we're at Blades right now. In two days, we're going to OMS. Yeah. You guys will be in OMS. Yes. OMS. And then we've got uh, global shows coming up. We've got Wind Europe Bilbao. Yes. You guys will be there. Yes. Hamburg is, of course, the big one this, this fall. will be there for sure. Yeah. By then, we'll probably see some more installations. Yes. Uh, anywhere else that you guys are going to be that people can visit? Yeah. Uh, next week, we will be in uh, Tokyo okay. uh, with the uh, Japan Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, then we will also have a couple of smaller uh, areas in Europe and in, uh, and of course in October, mm -hmm. uh, the annual fair in China. Yeah, we also exhibiting there. Okay. So uh, and of course we will concentrate this year on on this product launch. But of course you can always come by and hear about all the other solutions. Of course. So we've got if we want to reach Polytech, of course, Polytech.com. That's an easy one. If you got a technical question, are we giving out your LinkedIn? I, don't know. I think I think it's best getting there you getting through yeah. the commercial yeah. guys yeah. first. He right? likes to talk, right? We need, to, we, need, we need to focus on the product. That's right. You've got stuff to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the best way to get a, get a hold of Polytech if you need to? It's it's simply to contact uh, me or one of my business development sales team, uh, the Mark Foley or the Thomas Nielsen and so forth. And uh, but if you go to our website, mm -hmm. you can find names and address, numbers, Perfect. email address, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's probably the easiest way, and you will find me and my colleagues there. Fantastic. So polytech.com. If you've got questions about the new uh, LEP product they're putting out, the existing LEP products they have in the market, or any of those solutions, fellas, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank thanks you for having us. Yeah, we'll chat soon. Yes. Cool. Thank you.